entries which cannot be entered, tra transactions which cannot be entered in the cash book, in the purchase table, the sales table, purchase return, sales return, they would ultimately find their place in the journal proper. Journal proper is the journal just as we have discussed before with a date, particulars, ledger folio, amount and amount. First, when we understood how a journal is prepared, that format, that is the format of the journal proper. What kind of entries are passed through the journal proper? Like I said, entries which cannot be entered in the cash book, purchase day book, sales day book, purchase return, sales return. Bills receivable and bills payable. Sometimes bills receivable and bills payable books are not maintained and therefore those entries would be recorded in the journal proper. Some of the entries are, one is opening entries. What is an opening entry? When, when the ledger accounts are closed at the end of the year, all income and expense accounts are completely closed by transfer to profit and loss. However, assets and liabilities, there are balances and these are carried forward to the next year. So usually opening, there is an opening entry consisting of all assets. All the assets accounts are debited. Individual furniture account debit, machinery account debit, cash account debit, bank account debit, debtor account debit, etc. 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 Two liabilities. So assets account debit, two liabilities, all the opening balances of liabilities, two capital, two capital. So that is an opening entry. This entry cannot really be passed in the credit purchase or sale, sale uh, the, in the purchase day book or the sales day book, etc. That is recorded in the journal proper. It is recorded in the journal proper. Similarly, we have closing entries. What are closing entries? Expense and income accounts, like I said, are closed by transfer to the profit and loss account. So we have profit and loss account debit to rent, to salaries, to all other expenses. Similarly, incomes are taken to the credit side of the uh, profit and loss account or sales is taken to the credit side of the trading account. These we will understand in detail when we discuss final accounts. But we have certain closing entries and since they cannot be recorded in any of the other books, they are also recorded in the journal proper. Next, rectification of errors. Sometimes when we make mistakes, like we had said before, that wages paid for construction of machinery was debited to wages account instead of machinery account. So we've made a mistake. Now we have to rectify this error by saying wages account debit to machinery. Such a transaction, wages account debit to machinery, we cannot record in any of the other subsidiary books. So that would be recorded in the, in the journal proper. Adjustment entries at the year end, usually there are some adjusting entries like the entries for outstanding expense, prepaid expense, depreciation, etc. All these are called adjustment entries. Outstanding expense, prepaid expense, accrued income, income earned in advance, depreciation. These are some examples of adjustment entries which are made through the journal proper. Other miscellaneous entries. Maybe if we have a credit purchase of machinery, credit purchase of machinery, can we put it in the purchase day book? No. Why? Because it is a credit purchase of machine, not credit purchase of goods, not credit purchase of goods. So this such an end, such a transaction would be recorded in the journal block. Bad debt recovered. will not come in this book if cash has been recovered. However, if there is a bad debt, what is the entry for a bad debt? Bad debt debit to debtor. 
So I think bad debt recovered, you take it to cash book. Bad debts, bad debt to debtor cannot come in the cash book, cannot come in the purchase book, cannot come in the sales book. This would go to the journal proper. So these are some of the examples of entries which could go to the journal proper. So cash book, all cash and bank transactions in cash book. All credit purchase of goods in the purchase day book or credit sales of goods in the sales day book. Credit return, purchase return in the purchase return journal. Sales return in the sales return journal. If there is bills payable and bills receivable, many, many bills payable, many transactions with bills payable and bills receivable, such books may also be kept by the owner. All other remaining entries will find their place in the journal proper.